Hi, in this video, we're solving a common problem, how to build and simulate an inverting op amp circuit with a specific game. So I'm gonna open up my circuit lab editor here. I'm gonna go over the operational amplifier section. And I'm gonna drag one of these bad boys onto my circuit. Um, now there's two properties of an op amp that we're gonna be talking about. First, an op amp will take the voltage at these two input terminals, the non-inverting terminal and the inverting terminal, and take the difference of those two voltages and multiply it by a really, really high number at the output. That really, really high number is referred to as the open loop voltage gain. That's uh, set here in circuit lab with this A underscore OL. And notice how all of these have some super, super high number. Um, you got millions, hundreds of millions. The actual number in this case doesn't matter. Um, there are some cases where it does, uh, but for our purposes right now, the actual number doesn't matter. Just remember, it's a really, really high number, the open loop voltage gain. Um, the other property of the op amp that is very important here is that no current is allowed to flow into or out of either of these two terminals. Well, it's actually a very, very small current in these sort of real device models. Um, there is something called an ideal op amp, um, which is usually comes up in problem sets or maybe in the literature, um, which aren't real, but they have these two properties sort of cranked up um, to the maximum, which means the open loop voltage gain is actually infinite and zero current can flow into and out of the terminals. But that's not real. Uh, we're gonna drop this real uh, model into our circuit and sort of build our amplifier off of that. Cool. These two properties we can actually see here in circuit lab. Um, by just setting up a quick circuit, I'm gonna ground the non-inverting terminal and I'm just gonna name my output node here at one and I'm gonna drop a voltage source into my inverting terminal, just so I can click around and see the gain. I'll go over to simulate. Oh, look, I'd already done these. So I'm just gonna run the DC solver. Oh, V in. Oh, I didn't name V in. Um, okay, I'll go name, name my input node. It's good practice. Um, there's my input node. Um, let's go ahead and add those back in. go, run the DC solver. Let's see, our, our voltage at the input is one volt, as expected, because I put a one volt voltage source there. And my output is now negative one million volts. Um, and that is true because this is zero, zero minus one is negative one, times the open loop voltage gain, which we can see here is one million, is negative one million. So that's cool but not really that useful, right? I wanna be able to set that gain. I can't just have an arbitrary gain set by some manufacturer for me. Um, so in order to get to this inverted amplifier, I'm going to introduce, introduce one more concept here, and that is negative feedback. Uh, now, negative feedback is a very deep concept. Um, it is multiple semesters in college, um, but I'm gonna try to introduce it here sort of in a very lightweight way um, and try to reason about this circuit. Now let's say I have this circuit in this configuration here. Let me add my output back. Should not have deleted that. Um, let's look at this configuration. Um, and let's say that the universe was to somehow randomly add a tiny bit of voltage here at the non-inverting terminal. Say it was to go up by a tiny bit. Well, the, in, the amplifier would take this difference, multiply by a really high number to make out go up a lot, right? But then because of the way I set it up, that output would sort of present itself at the inverting terminal here. So it'd be very high negative inverse, which would make, which would sort of fight that output, right? So anything, anything that makes this go up will make this go up, but then get fought by itself. So the way we've set this up, it means that the op amp is going to balance out any changes. Um, second, I lost my tab. There we go. It's going to balance out any changes. So there's going to be no difference between these two input terminals. In this configuration with negative feedback, um, I have basically built a follower circuit, which is kind of cool. I can actually show it in circuit lab by adding a sine wave here. Um, and if we go to simulate it, oh my, uh, I'm going to go over the time domain simulation and see this output. my input back in. Um, let's go ahead and see that. And we can see just one line. Oh, because I only graph my output. 
Let's graph the output and the input. Um, so now there's two lines, but they're right on top of each other, right? Because this is a follower circuit. Cool. That's neat. Um, but still not that useful. Um, because I want an amplifier, right? I want to have some gain. All right, so how do we set that up? So I'm going to bring this input out here. Oh, I don't need that anymore. Get rid of these wires. Um, I'm going to ground um, the non-inverting terminal again. And I'm going to grab, grab a resistor here. I'm going to drop that in there. I'm going to call this one RF. And then I'm going to drop another voltage source. It's one volt again. Connect that there, line things up, because why not? That's my input. I'm going to drop another resistor in right here. And I'm going to call that guy R in. OK, so let's look at this circuit. And let's try to reason about it in the exact same way we did before. right? So we have the same sort of negative feedback configuration, whereby the op amp is going to work to make these two terminals have the exact same voltage. Now, we can't do that directly. Uh, but what it does is it changes the output and then measures the input again and then changes the output again, sort of in a negative feedback loop um, that essentially makes these two terminals be exactly the same. And I've grounded the non-inverting terminal, which means this terminal is also ground. Um, that's a virtual ground it's often referred to as. Um, so if this is ground and I have put one volt source here and I have a resistor here, that means I can use V equals IR to say there is some current that is flowing this way, right? There has to be because voltage, resistance, current. Now that current cannot flow into this terminal. That is the other property of our op amp. So that means that same current has to go up and through this feedback resistor RF. So if I have the same R and the same I, that means the drop across this resistor has to be the same as this V. Right? So I predict that this output voltage right now is going to be negative 1. Let's go ahead and check that to see if I am right. Get rid of these. And let's measure both the input and the output, run the DC solver, and aha, I am correct. The output of this, of this circuit right now is negative 1. Now what would happen if I say double this resistance? So thinking about it again, I have a V, a voltage drop, across an R, which means there is some I going this way. That same I is now going through this resistor. So I have the same I, but twice the R. So that means V should be twice V. I predict out is going to be negative 2. Let's see if it is. Aha! It is! Huzzah! So the really cool thing here is that now I have control of the gain by just changing these resistors around. It's actually the ratio of these two resistors that are able to set my gain. So I make, if I make this RF be five times as R in, run the DC solver, my output is now negative five. Now we can sort of play around with the simulation a little bit um, by changing my input to now be a voltage sine wave, so I can see this in a time domain simulation. Um, so time domain, uh, same sort of time domain simulation as just before. And let's my, see my output versus my input and run it. And huzzah, this is my input going up and down between one and negative one. And you'll see the output is sort of an amplified version of that. It's a negative amplified version of that. But I've made an amplifier for which I can set the gain. Yay! Pretty cool. You can find this uh, link to this circuit in the description of this video. You can open it up, change it, simulate it for yourself, and see what happens. If you found this to be helpful, please like the video, and we will see you next time.